Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet the Unicorn Face Square by Lisa from Cute Crochet Makes for her Unicorn Dreams Blanket Crochet Along. Now you don't have to be taking part in the Unicorn Dreams Blanket Crochet Along to make this square. It is absolutely adorable and would make for a really cute blanket just on its own, maybe teamed with some plain white squares either side. It's so cute. So definitely stay tuned and give this video a watch. If this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. All the information for this square is over on Lisa's website, Cute Crochet Makes, which I've linked to in the description box below. So don't forget to hit that see more button to expand the description box where you'll find links to everything that I mention in this video down there. For this video itself, it's going to be a bit of a Frankenstein's monster because white is absolutely the worst colour to try and show you how to crochet with. Now, I did try to film this with the white. I don't know if I am able to pop in a little bit of footage of my failure. <laughs> Maybe if I've worked out how to do that in post-editing, there'll be a little bit here where you can see how impossible it is to see the stitches when crocheting with white. So as I say, I'm going to have to cobble together a few different bits and pieces and lump it all in to make this square. So with that in mind, it is 100% worth your time heading on over to Lisa's website, grabbing a free downloadable PDF copy of this pattern. I have mine right here and it talks you through everything right down to placement and how to stitch stuff on, which is things that I won't necessarily be covering in this video. I'm just going to be showing you how to crochet the individual pieces themselves. All right, so that's all the housekeeping out of the way. So to begin, you're going to be basing this from a solid granny square. Now, as always, for all you pro crocheters out there and seasoned solid square makers, what I need from you is a six round solid granny square with a single crochet edging row. Now, if you have been doing these squares along with me, you'll know that quite a few of them now start the same way. For Anyone who is a little bit uncomfortable following a written pattern or is a beginner or just like a refresher on how Lisa does her solid granny squares, I am going to drop in the footage of this happy little, I think he's a happy face rainbow square, happy rainbow square, whatever he's called. He is made exactly the same way. Now this color shows up a lot better on film. So I'm going to drop in the first three rounds of how you crochet a solid granny square for anyone who would like that information. That is about to follow, so stay tuned. I'll also drop in a timestamp for anyone that wants just a hint as to how to do that final single crochet edging. There are timestamps you can click on to leap straight to different sections of the video. I'm aware there's a lot more chatting in the front of this video than usual, but I just want to cover all these bits and pieces and to let you know why throughout this video, you're not really gonna see me crocheting with white, yet I end up with a white square. <laughs> For the unicorn square, you're going to need your white yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook. So grab those and then you can follow along the instructions in this color, but obviously you will be using white. With my four millimeter hook and my clematis yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and make a magic ring. Now, if you don't know how to do a magic ring, I have a video on how to do that in the description box below or a little card should have popped up up here. And again, for the double crochet stitch that we are about to do, I also have a video on how to do that stitch. So we're going to start with a chain five, which counts as your first double crochet and a chain two, Then you're going to place three double crochet into the magic ring. Now for any point I am going to fast, you can use the three dots at the top right of your video, the settings to slow the speed, or indeed you can of course, pause and rewind the video. So we're going to chain two and place three more double crochet into the magic ring.
chain two, three double crochet. chain two and place two double crochet into the ring because of course that chain five counts as your first double crochet and chain two so you only need to end with two double crochet then we're going to slip stitch to the third chain of this initial chain five that you did so down here one, two, three. If you can't find your third chain, don't worry too much. You just want to sort of be aiming for the top whilst leaving a couple of chains free to act as your corner space. So once you've joined with a slip stitch, you are free to tighten up that magic ring at the back. Then go ahead and slip stitch into that chain two space, ready to begin round two. Now round two starts the same way with a chain five, which counts as your first double crochet and chain two. And then into the same space where you just slip stitched and chained from, you're going to place two double crochet. Now shunt those around a little bit so you can clearly see these stitches here and you're going to place one double crochet into each of these three double crochet from the round below. So going under the top of each stitch. So you'll have three double crochet stitches across the side here. Then you're at your corner space and a corner is formed with two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, all into that same chain two space. Now you see how these two double crochet are covering up the top of this one here. So shunt them around to give yourself a bit more room. And then you're gonna pop a double crochet into each of those three double crochet from the round below. We're back at a corner now. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet all into that same chain two space. Give them a tug around and place a double crochet into each of these three from the row below. Back at a corner, so two double crochet chain two, two double crochet, all into that same chain two space. Pull them back around again. And you can see you have quite clearly two double crochet tops here. And then here, where you slip stitch joined to that chain three, you almost want to be putting that final double crochet almost under that slip stitch there. So you're essentially working into that chain three from the row below. And then to finish the round, you're going to end with one double crochet back into this original chain two space. And slip stitch to the third chain of that chain three, chain five, sorry. 
and then slip stitch into the chain two space. So I'll show you one more round so that you get the general gist of a solid granny square. So again, chain five, which counts as your first double crochet and chain two and pop two double crochet into that same corner space. And now just like before, you're going to double crochet into each of these double crochet stitches from the round below. Now you had three down here, but each time you do another round, each side section grows by four stitches. So your corners grow by four stitches. So for this round, you'll have seven. On the next round, you'd have 11 and so on. So it's always four stitches more than you went into on the round below. Then when you're back to your corner, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, all into that same chain two space. Don't forget to shunt your corners round a little bit so you can clearly see all your stitches from the row below and just repeat that all the way around. So double crochet into each of your double crochet stitches, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into each of these chain two spaces and I will meet you back here so we can finish off the round. So to finish the round, you're going to end with one double crochet back into this chain two space where you started and slip stitch to the third of that chain five. So the third chain of your initial five chains that you did. Then slip stitch into the chain two space itself, ready to begin the next round. So I need six rounds in total. You've just done three. So I need three more of these each time as I said, your sides will grow by four more stitches. So you go ahead and do six more rounds. Do not cut your yarn and meet me back here for round number seven. Okay, I am just finishing up my sixth round here. And I'm gonna finish off with a double crochet and slip stitch to my third chain now do not break your yarn slip stitch into the chain two space and you're done with the solid granny round so you should have six rounds of a solid granny square now don't worry too much if it is starting to twist at this point you can see mine's got a bit wonky that's fine you can block it at the end if it really bothers you but what I've found with Lisa's solid squares is the minute the appliques are sewn on to your square, it really helps sort out that twist and it doesn't really look too warped. So like I say, don't panic if it's twisting. That's the nature of a solid granny if you're not turning in the rounds. After a few rounds, it just wants to whoop. So don't panic. All right, round seven. You've slip stitched into the chain two space. So you're in the corner ready to begin this round. Now you're going to chain one, pop a single crochet into that chain two space, chain two, and then pop two more single crochets into that same chain two space. Now you're going to place a single crochet into every double crochet stitch all the way along and in the corners you are going to place two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet. So we're going to go ahead and whiz around this round and I will meet you back here to finish off the seventh round. Don't forget to move your corners around if they are covering 
your beginning stitches. So remember, in the corners, two single crochet, chain two, two single crochet, give them a shove and continue down the line. Okay, so I am nearly done with my single crochet across the top. There we go. And to finish the round, you're going to end with a single crochet back into that original chain two space and you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the very first single crochet that you did. So we're now done with the solid granny square. So chain one, grab your scissors, cut yourself a decent long tail, pull it up, pull it tight, weave in that end, give it a smush about. And now we can move on. Okay, welcome back to anyone that has just sat and watched how to do the solid square part. Hopefully now you've got your solid square in white and you're ready to move on. Now for all these little bits and bobs, the horn, the ears, the hair and the little cheeks, we need a variety of hook sizes, four millimeter, three millimeter and two and a half millimeter hooks. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate, not only are these very pale colors nigh on impossible to see on camera, using such tiny hooks also is not a friend of the camera. So for all of these following applique sections, I'm going to be using chunky yarn in completely different colors. So you can clearly see my stitches and a four millimeter crochet hook, but I will tell you right at the beginning of each little bit, which size hook and color you are supposed to be using for your square. So first up, Let's do these adorable little ears. Now for your ears, you're going to need your white yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook. I'm gonna be using blue. Okay, so I got some blue chunky yarn and a four mil hook. This is purely so you can see what I am doing. So we're going to start with a slip knot and pop that on your hook. Now we're going to chain seven. So with your seven chains, you're going to skip that first chain, which is hanging down from your hook. This loop does not count as anything. Skip this chain and we are going to work six single crochets one into each of those six remaining chains. So skip that first chain and work immediately into the second one and just pop a single crochet into each chain. So you'll have six stitches at the end of this row. Now we're going to turn the work, but do not chain. Just turn your work, flip it straight around. Now you're going to skip this first stitch and put a single crochet in the remaining five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and then five, which will be just curled around hiding down here. So skip that first one, do not chain, skip that first one and pop a single crochet into the remaining stitches. So you'll have five stitches. Do not chain, turn your work, skip that first stitch and put a single crochet in the remaining four stitches. We're gonna repeat that again. Turn your work, skip that first stitch and work a single crochet in the remaining three stitches. Again, turn your work, skip that first one 
and pop a single crochet in the remaining two stitches. And then one more time, turn your work without chaining, skip that first stitch and put a single crochet in that very last stitch. Turn your work and chain two. Now you're going to slip stitch into the first of those two chains. So ignore this one and slip stitch into this chain here. And then slip stitch into the single crochet where you just chained from. So into this stitch here, just pop a slip stitch. And that forms the sort of peak of your unicorn ear. Now to finish, you're going to loosely slip stitch all the way down the side of your ear. In the corners here and here, you're going to slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch. So slip stitch all the way down here, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, slip stitch all the way across. And again, in the bottom here, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, and then slip stitch all the way back up to the top. And we're gonna finish by slipping back into this same single crochet where your chain two little pico is. So just keep it nice and loose and evenly slip stitch down the sides. So don't forget in the corners you want to slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch. And you want to end with a slip stitch back into that single crochet. So you have your little triangle ear. Now you're going to need two of those. When you cut your yarn, make sure you are leaving a decent enough length to sew to your square. Now when sewing to your unicorn, let me bring in the original square here, you want to be leaving the tip of the ears free. So only attach in the sort of bottom section of the ear when sewing it on. You only you want it to be able to lift up. So just sew it along the sort of bottom section. All right, make two ears. Then we'll move on to the horn. Okay, for your horn, you are going to want to use your lemon yarn and a three millimeter crochet hook. I'm gonna be using chunky and a four mil just to demonstrate. So pop a slip knot on your hook and to start the horn, we're going to chain six. And just like for the ears, you're going to skip this first chain and you're going to put a single crochet in the remaining five chains. So skip this first one and pop a single crochet in the next five chains. Turn your work, do not chain. Skip this first stitch and put a single crochet in the next four. Chain one, turn, and place a single crochet in each of your four single crochets. Turn your work, but do not chain, and place a single crochet in those last three stitches.
chain one, turn, and place a single crochet in each of your three stitches. All right, for the next row, you're going to turn, do not chain, put a single crochet in the second stitch, chain three, and we're going to slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. So ignore the loop that's on your hook, ignore this chain, and we're going to slip stitch into the second chain. Then single crochet into the next stitch. Now, just like for the ears, we're going to slip stitch loosely down the sides in the corner here and the corner here, slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch. So slip stitch and then do your little corner of slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, slip stitch all the way along here. Do your little corner again with the chain one, come back it up here, and then we're going to end with a couple of slip stitches into the horn itself. This sort of chain two bit up here, chain three bit. So when you reach the top section, add a couple of slip stitches just right up to the top of the horn to give this sort of tip a little bit more structure. And chain one, cut your yarn and make sure you're leaving enough yarn to sew your horn. To your square so the little horn sort of gets sewn on up the top here it's underneath this hair <laughs> all right next up the hair okay so for the hair we have two different lengths of hair we're going to be using a four millimeter hook for the hair so the same size as the square itself now these two different lengths I'll show you how to do the long one. I'll tell you the numbers for the shorter ones. And I'll show you how you get this sort of twiddled up effect when you're sewing on. So I'm gonna show you a long piece of hair first. For these two, this pink and this blue, you need obviously two. These two are the same length. So the hair couldn't be simpler. Pop a slip knot onto your hook. And for the two long pieces of hair, so the front two pieces of hair, we're going to chain 36. Oh, so that's 36. So you need two, which are 36 chains long. And for the shorter pieces, you're going to make two, which are just 30 chains long. So regardless of whether you are doing the two long pieces or the two short pieces, it's exactly the same. Skip this first chain and work a single crochet into the next and into every single chain all the way along. So for the two long pieces of hair, you'll end up with 35 single crochets. And for the two shorter pieces of hair, you'll have 29. So once you've got your final stitch, you want to chain one and leave enough yarn to use to sew the tendril to the square itself. So you want to weave in your little short end and then have your nice long end. I'm just going to zoom the camera back up a little bit so I can show you how you actually do the tendrils. 
Okay, so you'll notice these are all sort of curled and twisted around. When your actual chain is done, it's not really going to have too much of a curl. It's it's just kind of a, a straight line, really. So what you want to do is, in the instructions, Lisa says, to twist the sort of chains around, the single crochets around. So you twist them around. Then when you place them onto your square you want to be leaving sort of these ends free so it kind of curls around so it's a bit more natural but I basically just kind of lined it up squidged it up like this got it in position as to where I wanted it to be and then using your long tail pop in some stitches as you go so you can see they are attached by a few stitches periodically around so it's sort of it is attached but it's also loose which gives you these sort of nice sort of bouncy curls I did find this bit quite possibly the most frustrating because I had a very set way I wanted them to lie <laughs> and it just wasn't behaving so I've got a bit of a, almost like a little cowlick going on here but that's okay all right last but not least we have these adorable little cheeks now for making your cheeks you will be using a two and a half millimeter crochet hook which is absolutely teeny weeny so I am going to show you using chunky yarn and a four millimeter hook how you make these little heart shaped blushy cheeks okay for the cheeks we are going to start with a magic circle now if you don't know how to do a magic circle I do have a video on how to do exactly that a little eye will have popped up around here somewhere or I do have a link to that video in the description box below. So starting with your magic circle, you're going to go ahead and chain two. Then we're going to place three trebles into the magic ring. Now these are American trebles, so yarn over twice before you go into the magic ring. So three trebles, that's one, I've got two more to go. Then place three double crochet into this ring. One treble, remember, yarn over twice. Three double crochet. Three treble crochets, those yarn over twice. Then chain two and slip stitch into the magic ring and when you fasten off your yarn just chain one and leave enough yarn to sew your little heart to your square so you can pull that yarn through and you can pull your magic ring closed at the back so that's your little heart cheek now obviously you're going to need two then all that's left is to embroider your eyes and do a lot of sewing <laughs> so we've got to sew on your four lengths of hair 
the ears leaving the little tips free the unicorn horn and of course the cheeks so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As I said in the beginning, it's a bit of a Frankenstein's monster, purely because of the color of the yarn and the tiny, tiny hook sizes required. It was just impossible to film as is, hence we've got some chunky additions. Now, with regards to the assembly, Lisa has incredibly detailed instructions on where to pin things she's got a whole load of photos you can follow for the placement so if you haven't already definitely pop on over to her website and download that pdf that's available for free as always if you have any questions please feel free to shout in the comments section below i always do my best to try and get to everybody and if you haven't already subscribed it would be brilliant if you just took a moment to just hit that subscribe button and the bell notification because you don't want to be missing out on any of these Unicorn Dreams blanket squares. <laughs> so until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.